You know, the Wii U wasn't bad. Odd, yeah. Poorly managed and marketed, definitely. But it was a neat, if odd, concept of a console. At this point in time, it seems so many have come to desecrate the corpse of the Wii U that any further discussion might be moot. Well, here I am with a baseball bat, and boy does that dead horse look like it needs a beating. But when people bring it up in today's gaming atmosphere, it's to lament its shortcomings, or to be thankful that the Switch has avoided some of the same pitfalls. But rarely do some of them bring up what the Wii U had brought to the potluck of gaming. Its technology is either described as not powerful enough to compete, too gimmicky for developers, or never fully realized. At the core of the Wii U was a successful idea. Alright, thank you for coming out! Alright, shit, I gotta explain it. That would have been a shit video, god. The concept had already been a success for Nintendo with their handheld line, the DS. Two screens that have more info with the game. Hell, PC gamers love having dual screens, right? But there is a twist. One of the screens is also touch sensitive. And there is the brilliance. With that, you now have nine infinite buttons at your command. Red ones, blue ones, sliders, anime titties, and more. This completely changes the dynamic of play. Now, not only do developers have the standard abstracted buttons like any other controller, but any button they may possibly need. This swings the door wide open for different ways of play and interaction, but also brand new game mechanics that would not have been possible before. Games like Elite Beat Agents that ask you to keep in time with the actions that it is giving you, but also giving you those directions in the same place that you were to execute them, meaning you have to dynamically react and pay attention. Or the world ends with you. Not only did this game have an amazing story, the way it executed its action segments was even better. Instead of abstracted combos or menu systems, the game tasked you with memorizing gestures that you picked out in order to execute attacks. This puts you in the shoes of the main character as you are doing the same actions he is doing in game. Not only that, but using the second screen for him exclusively freed up the traditional buttons to control the second character, making you feel the need for them to work together, which is a major theme of the game. Or Trauma Center. With being able to actually interact with the field of play in a direct one-to-one -one way, you now have no abstraction with the manipulation of the game. No cursor. The stylus simply becomes your tool, allowing for a more direct and immersive gameplay loop. Part of me just feels the Wii U had something, you know? Some chutzpah. Of course my phone fucking goes off at that fucking great chutzpah. Part of me just feels the Wii U had something, you know? Some chutzpah. I mean, just look at the PlayStation 4 DualShock. In part, it is using some of the ideas brought forth from the DS and the Wii U. The center touchpad, while not a screen like the other two, does allow for a large variety of commands that developers can use to free up buttons or create new inputs not already on the controller. Hardware designers have been trying to give players more inputs for a long time. Whether it's just adding more buttons, motion sensing controllers, visually reading what your body is doing, or whatever the fuck Steel Battalion was. Look at this thing. This beautiful, disaster piece of gaming perfection. Too odd to exist. Too crazy not to. It's been going on like this since some of the first commercially available game consoles. Take the second generation console, the Intellivision. Yes, most of the controller seems a mess with its UFO stylized control disc, straight out of a 70s idea of sci-fi. What I, I want to talk about is that delicious, delicious number pad. A simple set of gridded number buttons that can and could be used in any order deemed fit. This gave programmers flexibility that the Atari 2600 couldn't afford with its single button joystick. It had options to replicate the extremely custom controls that arcade games had at the time. And with an added plastic layer that you could slide into the controller, you have a near complete custom experience for every game. You want more? I got more. Jaguar is not just a football team owned by the father of the owner of AEW. A 64-bit system in the weird cluster area of 16-bit and 32-bit systems 
It, it had a sort of standard control layout, if dated by the time due to its lack of them buttons. Well, kinda. It didn't have the kind of buttons other controllers were adding to their setup, like shoulder buttons on the SNES controller, or face buttons like the Genesis. No, instead it had a small number grid situated in between a D-pad and three contextual buttons. Hooray! Number pad! Again, more buttons, more control. Probably not comfortable, but hey, it's there! The Wii U concept of wanting to give more control is and was not new. We've been there, done that, succeeded, failed, laughed, cried, commiserated, grieved, buried the dead, went, oh crap, they're not dead, and then pointed at a computer keyboard and said, hey, that accomplishes a lot of what these ideas are trying to get at. With the Wii U, Nine Infinite Control was at the fingertips. Nintendo basically said, have at it. Make buttons. Any button. Every button. Make sliders, make maps, make scopes, make apps. Imagine what could have been. A point-and-click adventure style game where all the actions are on the second screen, allowing for an uncluttered world free of UI. A tactics game where you can draw out AI paths for them to follow or develop tactics with. Use it to scout ahead beyond the fog of war. Sports games in a similar fashion where you can draw your own plays. Heck, make a coach mode where you manage players and plays in order to get the results you want. Add a Tamagotchi bit. Pet your players and tell them they're a good boy. All this is to say that the second screen can add another layer of control, both in terms of literal control but also cosmetic, giving each game its own unique feeling controller much like Steel Battalion. But the Wii U was a flop. Was it the marketing, making the core concept unclear? Was that concept itself just too clunky for a relaxed home system setup? Or was it just that dumb of a name? I'm just glad that they didn't throw the baby out with the apparently opaque bathwater for this idiom to make sense with the Switch. And at the end of this, we gotta realize that the world ends with you is just a sweet-ass game.